Hey everyone, welcome back. We are super excited today to have two of the best in the industry join us. They are the reason that we moved over to eXp and the reason our business has literally doubled in the last six months. Everyone, please welcome Jason Samard and Eric Preston to the Zoom channel. Yeah, absolutely. So for anyone that knows, knows my story, I actually started working for a digital marketing agency that serviced real, real estate agents. And um, so I was uh, put in a pretty uh, high level role there. Um, and I got the chance to kind of um, end up in about 150 different offices around North America, teaching agents how to do uh, Facebook ads and digital marketing. So um, got a lot of exposure there. And we, we kind of in secret became realtors, me and my partner. Um, and then uh, we were on our, on our journey searching for a brokerage and um, what uh, made sense for us at the time, um, we ended up joining up with uh, Keller Williams, uh, partly because it was cost effective. We were still working full time. Um, we had heard they had some good training resources and whatnot. Um, so I spent uh, the first uh, little while there, uh, about a year and a half. Um, and then uh, I met Jason and uh, I had been following Jason actually for quite a while. Uh, it was around uh, three years. We'd actually been following his journey through the Real Geeks channel. Um, so I had reached out to him. We got on a call. We just chatted. He, um, kind of told me what he was doing with the XP. I really saw the collaboration opportunity with him. And uh, I felt like, um, even though where I was, was great. I, I saw more or less an unlimited potential, uh, being able to partner with a guy like Jason, um, because we had very complementary skill sets. Um, so for me, I, I saw a bit of a blue ocean in terms of opportunity. And that's, that's more or less why I took the plunge is, saw the opportunity with Jason. I saw the EXP model and the uh, ability that it allowed for someone like myself who has a very strong digital marketing background to partner with a guy like Jason who has a very strong real estate background and create something really special. So uh, probably the best decision, business decision I've ever made for sure. And <clears throat> sorry, Jason, uh, before we get into why Dan and I maybe left, let's, let's hear a little bit about you, where you're from and how you got to where you're at. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I came into real estate um, having been fairly successful in my 20s. I was a bank manager at 22 and did sort of the upper middle class journey that, you know, your parents tell you you should do. I came from a middle class household. So, you know, my parents told me I'd made it in my 20s. And I felt like I always had this void that I was like this entrepreneur that was settling, playing safe. And uh, oh, did I hit my, did I hit mute by accident? Nope. Still no, you're on. good. All right, cool. Sorry. Um, my computer gave me a message. So I decided that <clears throat> um, I needed to go and, and take a leap into real estate. And it was it was kind of out of necessity. I sort of hit a rock bottom in, in my late 20s. I unfortunately, went through a divorce and uh, found myself in, in a place where I needed to uh, reinvent myself. And I realized I'd played it safe for a long time. And it's not until you sometimes hit a financial rock bottom that you have to kind of reinvent yourself. And you need to look yourself in the mirror and take accountability for where you're at. And so I realized, okay, the reason I'm not where I want to be is, is nobody's fault but my own, right? So I need to get myself out of this. So I started my real estate journey November 2015. I remember coming in with a one-page business plan and basically sharing it with a friend of mine at the time who'd been my realtor, Braden Weecroft. And uh, we sat at Saigon Kitchen right beside uh, the Remax office where I was going to hang my license. And I was showing them this one page plan with these specific activities and things that I was going to do. And my goal is I want to do 43 deals in my first year. And I remember the conversation we had and he kind of looked at me funny and he kind of looked at me like, OK, kid, in a sense, right, like as if that's possible. And so uh, I told myself, I'll just put my head down and I'll focus on executing on the on the plan. I set up 135 deals in my first year. <laughs> that uh, <laughs> that was that was a uh, couple things happened. So in my first 90 days, I had about 27 deals that I had set up, and uh, so I had 27 deals closed and pending, and I had this business rolling. And uh, I was using a technology partner at the time called Real Geeks, and I basically told the uh, I'd message the CEO of the company to say, hey, I just want to thank you so much for this amazing technology tool. It's really helped me in my business. And, and he, you know, here's where I'm at. And like, I just got to thank you guys. And he's like, hey, would you like to be a guest on Keeping It Real, which was a show that I'd watched where they interview these mega realtors that are doing massive things that I'd watched hundreds of times. And uh, I was like, wow, like, sure, I'd be honored to be on, on that show. And I remember on the show, he put me on the spot and he basically 
said, look, you're at 27 deals. You're, you know, four months into your business now. What's your goal for the year? And I'm like, well, I guess, I guess I need to set it a little higher. My goal is 43. He's like, well, you should set it higher. How about 90? So we set the goal publicly at 90. And he's like, I'll tell you what, let's set, let's put that out there. And then we'll come back and revisit this next year and see how you did. So I didn't realize that people in my own market actually watch these, these videos. So I had some people message me like 90 question mark. Like I was like a lunatic and crazy. So I was like, holy crap. So I had this invisible chip on my shoulder all year. So needless to say, um, I was able to build a business exit production in three and a half years. I've been out of production for two full years built an amazing world-class coaching company, have a team, our, our team's going to do over 400 sales this year, 200 million in sales volume. And, uh, and we've got an amazing uh, coaching company. And now we've got a phenomenal um, EXP collaborative movement group. We've got over almost 250 agents that we're mentoring and helping uh, globally right now. And, and thanks to people like Eric and yourselves, it's been uh, an amazing journey where we've helped a lot of people really level up in their businesses. So um, that's the short version of the story. <laughs> wow Medium that's short. The, quite yeah quite a uh, quite a story um dan how about you where'd you come from how'd you get to where we're at yeah for sure so joined uh oakwind realty uh at year one or day one rather we had uh or i had definitely interviewed with four or five six of the top brokerages and kind of analyzed them and felt what was right for myself oakland was the the best fit at the time you know they were boutique they were small they seemed to have incredible training um <clears throat> really cool branding and uh just a good vibe overall right i thought the owners were awesome and, and they seemed really willing to help a brand new agent so joined them and things were amazing for four years, you know, super, super happy to have uh, started my career with those guys. Uh, and of course, you know, a little bit later on, we decided to, we being Ryan and I, um, we partnered up and decided to get coaching. And as you can tell, you know, the energy and the history and just the, the quality uh, of, of both Eric and Jason really, really kind of stimulated and motivated us. So through working with those guys initially, they kind of opened up our eyes to opportunities and, and the fact that we needed to level up our business. And there were a couple of brokerages out there that were, of course, you know, trying to proposition us and get us to come over. And suddenly the offering became pretty enticing. And so we explored how we could work with these brokerages to grow our business. And to be honest, you know, we also saw that uh, where we were when we joined Oakland wasn't where we were now, let's say, and probably wasn't the best place to go if we wanted to grow because they had their model and it's working brilliantly for them, uh, but we wanted something a little different. So we actually went to another brokerage prior to eXp because they had offered us uh, some ownership in the company, uh, some revenue share from their agents and some profit share because they were a pre-sale business model that was gonna share revenues from renting out the showroom. It all sounded great, but ultimately it did not pan out the way we envisioned or how we were promised. So during this time, we see everything that's happening with eXp, thanks to Eric and Jason. And we're like, geez, this, this just starts to make so much sense that, you know, once you kind of get into it, you can't unlearn it, if you will. And so we made the move uh, just two and a half months ago. And my goodness, the opportunities have blown wide open. And um, we're so happy that we made the move and we're so happy that we did it with Jason and Eric, because it's not just about the brokerage, it's who you align yourself with in this industry or any industry. And when somebody has your interest at heart to the level that these guys do, I mean, like I said, it's doubled our business and now powered by eXp. Uh, there's no doubt that this is where we're gonna be for the future because we are seeing all sorts of income and growth and collaboration that we just cannot get anywhere else. Yeah, uh, guys, just before we uh, continue going on, please make sure you click the link uh, in the description and make sure you check out the collaborative movement landing page. I mean, it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, there's a lot of information there that uh, will direct you. Um, but yeah, anyways, getting back on to, to what Dan just said there. Um, you know, I think what we, we had determined is when you go from sort of zero to call it a hundred thousand dollars in income or, or whatever it is you want to achieve in your business from the start, there's a certain set of, of, of a certain skill set that you need to develop to get there. And then I think, you know, over the, over the four years that Dan and I worked together, we kind of got to a place where we realized um, that we needed somebody who was going to give us the next set of skills, if you will. Right. So from zero to call it, you know, a hundred or $200,000 in income, you, you're required to do X, Y, and Z. But if you want to go from 
200,000 to, you know, a much higher uh, dollar figure or even a much just bigger business, whatever your desires might be, you can't do the same things that went from zero to 200 to go from 200 to 500, right? So we decided that while these, you know, these brokerages were great, they helped you get a, a good start. Um, they weren't helping us really refine our business to the point where we wanted to go. So, you know, we identified this problem, or I, I guess it's a problem. It's just a, an inflection point in our own businesses and decided that, hey, we need to align ourselves with people who, who really understand um, where we're trying to go. And when we met with, um, with Eric and we met with, with Jason, um, you know, it, it started like down to the science of language, like how are we talking to people, right? And it, 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 was, uh, it helped us almost grow after the first, um, the first meeting we had. I literally changed how I spoke to people. And that literally helped me by on day two, become less aggressive, less commission breathy, and more genuine with how I was trying to help people, right? And that was such a huge leap forward in my own business. But um, yeah, I mean, do you guys feel that um, you guys moved on from the brokerages you were at because you felt some limitations? Why, why was eXp the choice? Maybe Jason, let's start with you. <laughs> yeah, here's the deal. I was ignorant to eXp for 14 months before actually looking at it. And uh, the truth is, uh, I just sort of took the sound bites that, you know, broker owners were throwing out there and that people were throwing shade at it, right? Just like anything that's uh, disruptive in a, in a positive manner, because eXp is all about the agents. Um, I was I was kind of ignorant to it. I was drinking the Remax Kool-Aid. And I, and I know lots of people that do. And, and Remax is a great brokerage. Don't get me wrong, right? But at the end of the day, what really was a turning point for me is when I exited production in my business and I started coaching, there was a, an agent on the team of the broker owner of the franchise who wanted me to coach him. And uh, I remember actually he reached out to me and said, yeah, no, I'd love to, I'd love to mentor you and help you. And, and, and he was willing to pay for the coaching out of his own pocket, right? I mean, he was willing to make an investment in himself, which would have benefited that team. Um, and then I didn't hear from him for a few days and then I ran into him. Uh, we were at some, some session or whatever. And, and he's like, Hey, I got to talk to you. And he basically told me that he got lit up by the owners. They basically told him it would just, it'd be a disloyal move and that it would be like cheating on your spouse and that they have a plan for him and blah, blah, blah. And I was, I was blown away because I'd never stolen an agent from the brokerage, never done anything like that. Right. And then I realized this isn't the collaborative environment I thought it was because here I am been an open book, helping people. I I'm doing panels. I'm, I'm bringing all these brand new agents to the brokerage, mentoring them and helping them be successful. And yet I wasn't allowed to coach somebody on their team because they saw me as opposed to seeing me as a valuable asset and a partner in their business. They saw me as a competitor because we had competing real estate teams. Then I realized that our values weren't aligned. And so that, that week, where they didn't call me and have a conversation about it. I looked into EXP. I thought, you know what, what's the one thing that's very different than anything else that I've, that I've looked at it's EXP. And I never looked at it with an open mind. But when I did, I was like, Holy crap, this company is exactly what I've been trying to build. It's all about giving back to the agents. It's all about creating multiple streams of income and giving people the ability to have an exit plan and a retirement. And it allowed me to do so many things that I couldn't do. So once I saw it, I couldn't unsee it. Then, then came the, the meeting with my team, right? I had to have a meeting with my team because it was their decision. It's not going to be my decision. It's going to be our decision together. And I basically asked them, I said, what's more important to you, our Sims brand that we've built or the Remax brand? And I went around the room and it was unanimous. It was our Sims brand. They're like, we don't care about the Remax brand. We've never promoted it. We've never focused on it. It wasn't about the Remax. It was about our brand. And uh, so we talked about the benefits and it was a unanimous decision. We had one agent who was kind of like on the fence because, you know, they were fairly new to the team and they just didn't know, but just took them a couple of days of just asking questions and looking at the information and, and they came over and it was the best move that we could ever make. I mean, not only did all their fees go down by about 60%, um, they became instantly more profitable because now they get to benefit in the stock growth of the company. They get to build, like I've literally built a pension plan for my team members through eXp. So cool. And we can talk about that, but it, it, it was an unbelievable transformation. So that's how we get in there. Eric, and uh, maybe uh, you can touch on, um, you know, how did you end up at eXp and, and maybe touch on a little bit of, of your collaboration with, with Jason and, and how the, maybe the multiple income streams and things like that were um, 
something you looked at and uh, evaluated before coming over? Yeah, I think for me, like it, it kind of ticked all the boxes, you know, and for me, I looked at the, the EXP model and it, it kind of seemed like a bit of an evolution of what Keller Williams was trying to do for me. Um, and the reasons I was attracted to them is, you know, they had the profit sharing, they had a focus on training. Um, and with EXP, when I did look at it with an open mind, and I think I didn't for a while and it took, you know, Jason presenting it, I think to me in the right way. Um, so when you look at it, like the big boxes for me were, um, multiple streams of income and the mentorship group you can be a part of, because, if there's anything I've learned in real estate being in coaching, you know, hundreds of agents and, uh, working in groups where we're doing a lot of interesting stuff with, uh, marketing and sales. Um, it's the people that create mentorship groups around them are the ones that are successful, generally speaking. And I didn't really feel like I was, that was, I was able to do it at the same level anywhere else because my passion, I'll be honest, was not real estate sales, right? Um, my passion is marketing. That's my zone of genius. That's what I love. That's what I feel like I'm good at. And so I could come over to EXP um, and I could be a part of a great mentorship group with a lot of really smart people, um, and learn a lot myself, but also offer what I'm really great at to those people in exchange, um, and really focus in on the area that I love and I'm good at. And that EXP has really allowed me to do that and just be a, be great at what I do and then give that to other people and help them level up. And I, I know you guys have experienced that firsthand as you, as you're saying from both Jason and I, and that's the benefit is I don't have to try and be a jack of all trades. I can just lean on Jason for what he's good at to help our partners do that. And I can help our partners do what I'm really good at. And that creates a really good synergy. So kind of the mentorship group was a really big thing for me. Um, obviously the, uh, multiple streams of income, like just being able to not only be an agent, but, you know, earn stock earn revenue share. And, uh, what it does essentially is it creates like a, it creates a win, win, win. Like if someone comes in EXP under us and we can mentor them and help them succeed for, and ask them for no money, right? Mm -hmm. They win. I win. You guys, everyone wins. Like the brokerage win, everyone wins. It's just a win, win, win. There's no loss. And when I was able to see that through that lens of like, wow, like, you know, um, this revenue share idea of the brokerage kind of staying lean and taking care of its agents instead of paying out these bricks and mortar fees and costs and whatnot. Like, um, I know a lot of brokerages are not very profitable. Um, and it's really cool that they're able to, um, give half of what they make back to their agents. Like it just felt to me like they cared once I, once I was able to see through the fog of like kind of the misinformation out there about it, um, understand that I could create multiple streams of income, be a coach and a mentor, which I was already doing. Like I sold a course to, you know, 400 people last year and I was helping them with their marketing already. Now I'm just able to do that at a whole new level. Um, and actually not even ask people for money we just get a partner on a much more interesting level. So I felt like it was a very forward thinking company. Like they kind of took a model I already believed in a little and, and, and evolved it. Um, and then the opportunity to part with someone like, well, like with like Jason uh, was also really cool. Cause I've been following him for so long. I knew he was, you know, at the top of his class and what he did, I knew he was amazing at what he did. I'd been following him for the, for quite a long time. Um, and just the, that ability and what we've been able to accomplish together has been yeah, it, it just felt like a no brainer to me once I, once I actually got down to the nitty gritty, um, and looked at it with an open mind. I'm going to say something really quick too. When, when I first talked to Eric, um, I saw brilliance. I was like, man, this guy's brilliant. And, and what he was feeling was an insecurity at the time because he hadn't been this mega agent and done all these deals because that was never his passion. His passion was always digital marketing. And I told him, I was like, Eric, you don't need to be that guy. Like you're a digital marketing master. That's what you need to focus on. I've got that side covered, bro. Like, again, our skill sets complement each other brilliantly. I've learned so much from Eric and I'm sure he's learned a lot from me that we've been able to tangibly implement in our businesses. And I promise you guys, we're exponentially more profitable, more viable and more successful because of the partnership. Because we understand that if you collaborate with people that have core values that are similar to you, but are geniuses in other areas, that's how you get growth. See, trying to be a jack of all trades, master of none has never been a good idea. In fact, I believe that everybody has one superpower, one really good thing that they do exceptionally well. Some people may be too, but at the end of the day, if you can focus on your one thing and do that exceptionally well, and then surround yourself with people that are brilliant in other areas, that's how you build a, a mastermind and that's how you become successful. And that's the whole premise of the collaborative movement is we're constantly looking to be in rooms with people that are smarter than us 
in different areas of the business. In fact, partnering with Ryan and Dan, these guys are brilliant in other areas of the business, right? Like they've got some things that they do exceptionally well that we're learning and benefiting from. So not only do you get Eric's brilliance, you get our, my brilliance, but you get theirs too. And it's a group of us working together to level up. And the best part is, is we, we all have multiple streams of income now for just doing what we'd be doing anyways by serving and, and mentoring and helping other people be successful. Well, now, Jason, um, <laughs> I think that's probably the first time you've ever called me brilliant in any of our conversations. So I'll take that as a big win. <laughs> um, but, you know, I, I do want to hear as well from, from Dan, because it's a diff- bit of a different perspective as we kind of came to the collaborative movement much later. We, we came once it was established, once there was, I can't remember, it was probably like 180 agents or something like that that had ho- already joined. So I think what's important maybe for some of the audience members is understanding, Dan, what was your aha moment? Like, uh, <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> Again, um, well, I had gone through some coaching and training before. Um, and yeah, it was okay, but something just wasn't resonating. And we're a part of a mastermind here in Vancouver with some, you know, top 1% agents and we've brought up coaching and there's a very much a reoccurring theme with all of them that essentially they're just very excited that their coach is making them a higher producing agent and great. You know, that's one, one, one goal that I guess as, as newer agents, especially we all have. Um, but in talking with Jason and Eric, it became very clear, very early that their goal was far more than just making you a good agent because as you may find out it can get exhausting it can be lonely and at the end of the day just chasing deals for the rest of your life wasn't totally my goal and these gentlemen really opened us up to the fact that they wanted us to not only have better um, agent skills but better businesses and better livelihoods okay we talk about you know carving out time to date our girlfriends and wives properly different people of course but uh, you know what i mean (laughs) 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 <laughs> but it's you know early. what I mean it's like real. you know there, there's, you have to enjoy <laughs> oh, your life too and you have to take time off which uh which Jason has forced me to do but um you know so these gentlemen and just you know the focus and the vision is so much bigger than just being a great realtor and of mm. course you know they basically said look you come over here and yeah great exp is going to provide two extra revenue streams but we're going to also give you five more you know what I mean? They're going to help create other avenues of our business and explore and expand our interests to enjoy our lives better and to have those, you know, ultimately seven passive revenue streams, which we're building towards. So, you know, once I kind of saw that this was such a more massive offering than just making my hamster wheel golden, it was absolutely <laughs> an aha moment and exactly. uh, got me really excited to, uh, to join these boys. Yeah. I think for me, um, you know, we, we've, like you said, Dan, we've had a lot of help along the way. We've had a lot of people, a lot of, you know, mentors, even outside of the business, right. That have, have provided some guidance and, and, and leadership. But I think at the end of the day, um, what really struck me was um, actually when, when Jason kind of brought up the fact about this revenue uh, sharing and, and he was like, no, I actually share my revenue sharing w- with my team. Like to, to me, that spoke to true collaboration, right? So it's one thing to call yourself a collaborative movement. It's another to be collaborative, right? And so, you know, since joining EXP and, and also since really, you know, in, engaging with both Eric and Jason in coaching, I've really felt like we're a part now of something much bigger than ourselves, right? And to scale the business to the, the places that, you know, we're hoping to go with it, um, you know, it's really cool to do that together. Um, and it's just a lot more fun. And then to be able to see everybody that you bring into the movement become successful as well. Um, sharing that success, you just, it feels it's a, it's a really good human moment, right? Hey, Ryan, um, why don't you, yeah. why don't you shed some light? I know you guys have mentioned you're doubling your production and whatnot, but why don't you guys share some light on kind of what those numbers look like so everyone can get a grasp on that. And, and can I say something really quick? I worked with Ryan and Dan for what, eight months before they came over to EXP? Mm-hmm. Yep. yep. Eight months. So I put in some time, right? Yep. I put in some time with you guys. You got to know me, my values. You got to implement some of the things that I was mentoring you guys on, right? So it's not, so for people listening, it's not like they came over to EXP and then they went from 50 something million to a hundred million. Like we worked on this over like the course of a year yeah, together, that's right. Yeah. Right. So I think that's important for people to know. Like, I don't want people to think like you switch over to EXP and I'm going to make you Boom. double your production tomorrow. 
Yeah. But I can tell you that, you know, if you give us 12 months, give us two years, right? We'll help you change your lives hundred percent. So just wanted to throw that out there before you guys share that, because I didn't want to have anybody misconceive that. Yeah. Two and a half months with the XP and all of a sudden everything changed. It, it was a process. Yeah. Well, I can, I can say that, um, you know, last year, Dan and I did somewhere, somewhere around 50, to 53 million, I think in sales, Dan, is that about right? Somewhere in we're that dead on, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then, um, <clears throat> you know, we're on pace right now to hit 96 to hundred million, um, this year. Right. And yes, Jason, to your point, you know, we had been working on this prior to, uh, really even joining EXP. Um, but where it got exciting, I think is during the coaching process, one of the reasons, one of the big reasons, at least I can speak to um, why my production levels have, have gone through the roof. I mean, I've done more deals this year than I've ever done by miles, right? And put it this way, in, in March of 2021, Dan and I were doing one deal every other day. It got that, it got that busy, right? Now, admit March was busy for everybody. There's no doubt, right? But we were doing, on average, between four to six deals a month. And, and in March, we did 17, right? And then we did, I think it was 15 the month after that. And we were able to actually maintain some of these production levels. And that's where I was just like, aha moment kind of happened in my brain, that the things I was being taught, the, the difference in my language, the difference in my follow-up, uh, the difference in our systems and in our, in our business that Eric could help Dan really perfect. Um, we're all contributing to a big successful change in our business. And I mean, you know, I remember, uh, and I share this with a lot of people, um, you know, I'll never forget the first sort of coaching piece that Jason told me. And I sat down and, and he was like, look, when you're in an open house and somebody comes in, what's one of the first things you ask them? And you're like, well, are you working with a realtor? And he's like, don't ever say that again. Don't, don't ever say that. Okay, well, what am I supposed to say? How do I qualify him? Use some softer language, something like, you know, who's helping you find a home and that softer tone, that ability to appeal to the genuine human side um, was really what I was after in the first place. Right. But I just didn't have the language. I didn't know when to use it. I didn't know how to use it and implementing these skills. I, I went from, you know, it would take me six or eight hours to convert someone over a period of, of weeks down to minutes right? Even on the same phone call, even in the same meeting. And then I was sort of like, okay, uh, I'm learning something here and it's working. And then it was transacting. And then I was getting referrals out of it. And now all of a sudden, what we had hoped for was actually taking place. And that was exciting. Super cool. The exciting part too, fellas, is we're just getting started the way I look at it. Like we've only scraped the surface of your potential in your business, right? I mean, there's still several levels that we haven't hit. And that's the exciting part is like, we're going to continually evolve and, and work on improving your business. But the, the best part is though, is, you know, that you have a group behind you that will take your call anytime you need it. That'll be there for you to support you. And there's no invoice that comes with that. You don't have to worry about how many minutes you're taking up of our time. You're our business partners. That's the way we look at it. Yeah. And that's the way that this group is all built. You know, and Eric and I have talked about this at length, right? When we made the commitment to really build a collaborative movement and take it to the next level, uh, we focused on building a really, really strong foundation first before we started adding any marketing sizzle. We wanted to make sure that when we brought agents in, that they got more mentorship, more value, more tools than they would anywhere else on the planet. Like that was super, super important to us. And I think that's a core value of our group is like give way more in value than you'll ever receive in payment. And again, the payment comes from the fees you'd already be paying to a real estate brokerage. EXP has just efficiently redistributed that to in, in a form that allows you to have mentors who have a vested interest in your upside. And that's what makes so much sense with the model. Cause you're already paying these fees, whether you're at Remax, you're at Oakwin, all these places, you're paying fees to somebody. What are you getting back in mentorship? Do you have anybody who's literally there who only gets financially compensated when you're successful? And you just don't in those models. We should point out too that um, prior to moving to EXP, yes, we were paying for the services of coaching of Jason and Eric, uh, and it, it was worth it all day long. But of course, the way that they built it and what Jason just mentioned is by moving over, 
uh, those fees are essentially inclusive in the brokerage. So yes, there's no there's no payment on top. It's it, it's that's an aha moment for us too, right? It was that it was a bit of a no brainer to partner with these guys and in essence not be paying out of pocket for it. It was incredible. So something I just want to ask both of you. So Ryan and I moved over at about year four, right? We had a functioning business and we put it into overdrive with you. What kind of agents are you finding are being most attractive, attracted to your Cloud River movement and who are you helping? Like who should be joining this? Eric, I'll let you answer this first one. Yeah, I just want to add something to the last point. I think um, for anyone watching, like, you know, I think um, Dan and Ryan have been working with Jason for a little while and, and we only started working together transparently a few months ago, uh, really. And um, you know, working on the lead gen, you, you know, you guys got a pretty massive deal out of the Google ads right away. Like I think it was a yeah. two and a half million dollar deal and we're just getting started there. And now I think we're having a meeting today about, you know, utilizing the, the ISA side of things and kind of taking it to the next level. And, um, to answer your, um, I, to going back to like how we're just getting started, I'm, I'm so excited because I see such massive potential in both of you. Like the first thing I saw with both of you is like, you're very well spoken you have a great brand and you're really excellent at branding. Um, and now I think for you guys, you've set the foundation to just really start scaling. Like I've, I've had, um, you know, I do a lot of coaching and teaching on YouTube and there's a small group of people that really take it seriously and put it into practice. And that's what you guys have been doing and you've already seen big benefits there. So I just want to shout you guys out for being wow. implementers and action takers because that stuff is going to be like, I just can't wait to see this all come to fruition. So, so to answer your question about what kind of people we're trying to attract is people like you guys who see the value in what we do, um, want to put it into practice and actually take action on it and want to build and grow, not just in more sales, but in a more sustainable business with leverage, with people, something you can be happy that when you look at it, you've built it successfully in the right way, because that's what a lot of mentors don't talk about is they just talk about like leads or the, the shallow stuff, right? But the real mentorship, the real meat of it is in the back end. Like, what are, how are you systematizing? Like, and so we're looking for people who have an entrepreneurial mindset, who understand that, that in order to learn these things is going to take years in some cases, months, and you've got to be a student. You got to constantly be a student and learning from people that have skills that you don't have. So we're looking for people who, and I love how Jason always says this one, are ready to put their running shoes on um, and get going, right? Because um, what I've been... Like we, we started working together a little bit before you joined EXP, but what's been really nice for me um, is now when I have a great person who comes into Vancouver, I, I, I love to send them your way because I know you guys actually have so much to add as well um, on top of what Jason and I are already adding. So like, um, it's been great. I've been able to help you build, build out this team now, which is like that, you know, that's obviously good for you guys. It makes me feel great too, to know that like these people I'm bringing into our organization are just getting that extra layer of support and are able to kind of grow with you. So like this, just speaking to the collaboration, like you can, I, I hope for anyone watching, you can kind of get the vision of like how this, like these little coaching relationships have developed into um, EXP as a model, being able to equip us to really take that to the next level, collaborate and really establish great relationships, friendships and, and business partnerships. So um, if anyone's interested in that, those are the kind of people we're after. Mm hundred percent. Like you, you said it like perfectly well, there's not much more I could add to it, but you know, uh, you have to take this business seriously. You know, you have to be somebody that is committed to the business first and foremost, and isn't afraid of taking massive levels of action. Um, have an entrepreneurial mindset, check your ego at the door. Ego is the number one killer of people's potential. It's a, it's a big problem. And there's a lot of it in this industry. And there's a lot of people out there that are chasing the wrong mentors. If your mentors are stuck on a hamster wheel, working 80 hours a week, ruining every relationship that they've ever been in, they're not spending time with their family. Those aren't the people you should be looking up to. The people you should look up to are the ones that have quality of life. They're the ones that can do as Kanye West, Kanye West said one time when he was, first got discovered, he's like, my life is dope and I do dope shit. Those are the people <laughs> that you need to be looking at. Eric Preston, when, when, I, first, when I first met you, right? I saw like, wow, like this guy's successful. You built this course doing all this stuff. Right. And I learned a lot from you. What were some of the things that you gained from me? What, what, you know, what was some of the value that you gained in our partnership working together that helped you in your business? And how did it transform from where you were to where you are today? The biggest thing I learned from you, Jason, was mindset stuff. Um, like having a better mindset around being a, like a go-giver. Like I remember when I met you, 
it was very clear to me that you, you know, just to make it very clear, Jason shares 75% of his revenue share back with his team. So when you actually partner with Jason, his whole team's invested in his coaching program. So you're actually partnering with his whole team because he shares that, he shares the love more, more or less. And so one thing I learned from you as I was building my business was to get the people I bring into my team. And, you know, I have a team of 10 now, which is crazy. <laughs> my, my business is, is, is really exploding. Um, I didn't even that's know been, that. <laughs> that's been, yeah, I know it's wow. been super, super exciting. So I, I, did, I did the count the other day and I was like, holy shit, I have 10 team members numbers. That's crazy. And so, um, some of the best and most valuable things I learned from you in the beginning was, and still today is get your team invested in what you're doing and share the love with them, like share the, share the revenue, the proceeds. Like, so I do like, you know, like a profit share with some of my team and, um, I overpay a lot of you know, my VAs and I get people invested in the vision and the, the, the culture and I treat them really well. And like, that has paid dividends because everyone's happy at, at, at what we're doing and they work harder and it's just like a win, win, win. So, um, that's one is like how to build a team in the correct way. Uh, the second is how to build leverage. Now I was always someone who was just a hard worker. I hustle, I bust my ass, Jason, you know, that more than anyone. Um, and he does, I had to, me. I had, <laughs> I had to take a step back and be like, I, I need to be more of an architect. And that's one thing you really taught me is you're, you're an architect in your business and you need to place people who are strong and you need to like encourage and manage them well. And, and, um, that's what I've been able to do now. You know, I have, uh, as I said, a team of 10, which is growing quickly. I, I constantly have job posts out now. Um, and I'm getting into that mindset of being an architect and being like a, you know, someone who's not just hustling anymore. Like I'm, I'm definitely still hustling, but, um, I'm, I have to be smarter about it. And how do I build leverage around me? That's going to help me actually scale and not just scale, bang my head against the wall, like scale properly and effectively. Right. So I'm at like, um, I have no investors. I'm, you know, bootstrapped everything I do. We're very profitable. Like, um, there's a lot of positive things happening. And I think those, those are, those are the two biggest things I would say that come to mind right away. Obviously there's a lot more, but yeah. Uh, and thank you for saying that. And I'll say some of the things that I learned from Eric that have been super valuable in my business. Number one is like how to properly like market ourselves. You know, um, Eric, Eric pointed out some flaws, like his YouTube game is incredible and we're learning and we're still students, Eric. So I apologize that we're not exactly where we need to be there, but we're trying and we are better than we were. Right. And I love that you're constantly pushing me and you're saying, Hey, dude, check. You got to fix this. You got to do this. Like you care and you care about pushing me. And so much so that like Eric's literally what I love about Eric too, is he's an impl implementer. You give him something and he'll go and implement it like nobody's business. And I have a couple students that are like that. And it's unbelievable. They're so good at implementing that I sit back and I'm like, holy crap, these guys are making me reevaluate what I'm doing and pushing me in a good, healthy way to be like, how can I be better? I need to step up my game because the freaking the sensei is getting whooped by the student now. And I like that. <laughs> and that's when you know you're in the right environment. Second thing I learned from Eric is how to properly take what we're doing and then make it more efficient in your delivery to your channel. Like we learned how to pr like create an actual course that was like tangible that people could do at their own pace. Um, I've learned a ton and I can tell you that I've added income streams to my business because of that partnership with Eric and what I've learned. And I've built some lifelong friendships and partnerships that, you know, I'll forever be grateful for because of having somebody like Eric that brings confidence and value. You know, I strategically um, have often placed people with Eric in our EXP organization because I know the value that they get. And as opposed to being selfish, I'm like, let's spread the love. Yeah. You know, you guys are the perfect example. You would have come over to EXP with or without Eric, right? Mm -hmm. Because we were working together. But I was like, listen, guys, let's go and go with Eric because here's the value that he brings. Him and I as a duo is an unstoppable force. And with you guys and the skills that you guys bring, like Dan, some of the stuff that you've done with your investor business and like that profile that you've built and like what you guys have been doing with your podcast, that's incredible stuff. And that's stuff that people are going to be able to learn from. And what's really, really cool with this model is we're not restricted to a small market area. Like yeah. Eric and I are thinking on a global scale. You guys are thinking on a global scale. We're helping people in multiple countries now. Like how freaking cool is that? 
Well, I think it know. really it really speaks to um, you know the comment that was made earlier in the conversation that you know if you want to go from zero to two hundred, you want to go from two hundred to five hundred. It takes different skill sets and partnerships to go from from those levels, right? So it's really cool to see the start, the idea, the aha moments, and then the scale, which has been really cool, right? Um, I think I want to end the conversation on a very important piece because it took Dan and I three years to come to EXP, if we're being completely honest, right? And I think for most agents, uh, for most people thinking about EXP, um, there's a, a fear of, or, or a misunderstanding, right? I mean, we, we talked about how when it was first explained to you, or, or you go and talk to another brokerage about it, they're like, ah, it's a fad. I mean, it's 12 years, 60,000 plus agents, but whatever a fad means. And honestly, I, I, you know, there was that misunderstanding and that misunderstanding can be dangerous if you take it um, uh, as gospel, right? So I kind of want to know from maybe we'll start with Dan. What was the biggest fear you had about coming to EXP? What were you afraid of losing? Because that I know is festering in agents' minds, right? <laughs> so let's talk about that for one sec, because I think that's maybe the last and most important piece of what we're talking about. Yeah, looking back at the fears, they seem a little ridiculous now, but I'm happy to share them. Uh, I think first was losing a physical brokerage. I thought having a beautiful office was super important to my business. Um, second, I didn't love EXP's branding. <laughs> I thought being associated with that, I'm like, if you can't take your branding that seriously, you know, what else is going on behind the scenes that doesn't make sense? Uh, you know, because we came from a, a brokerage that had what I consider very nice branding. Um, and third, just a, a lot of not understanding it. Like how can you have a managing broker uh, or multiple, but then not be able to get face to face with them? How do you make deposits if there's no physical brokerage to go to? And just really, you know, kind of put up a lot of barriers that um, were, were self-made and thought that those were more important than what was actually being offered from the brokerage mm -hmm. as a whole. Yeah, I think, you know, for me, it was, uh, it was a big fear of a loss of culture, right? I was like, oh, I'm so used to going to an office. It's got its own culture. I can shoot the shit with people. Um, only to then kind of realize the culture was something that I created, right? It was something that I often brought to, uh, to the meeting or often brought to the group. And I think that that's true of most people. So, I mean, the idea of, of losing culture is, uh, is misplaced, right? Um, and, you know, that being said, uh, there was just a general misunderstanding of what the business was. And I, you know, I, I thought, well, I thought, you know, our job was to sell real estate. It wasn't to, you know, attract or speak to other agents. But lo and behold, I found out pretty quickly that, um, once Jason helped us see the light, the revenue streams, the ownership, the collaborative movement, everything that we were missing out on um, was kind of my aha moment. And I, I just, I'll never, ever feel like this was a bad decision. <laughs> it's just, it's just transformed my life. It, it really has. Right. And the way I think that's probably the coolest part. I think I'm gonna, I'm going to say this guys, it takes a lot of confidence to be a leader. Okay. You have to have a lot of confidence and you have to have thick skin. And so to go out and take a leap into something that um, not everybody's doing or is, you know, misunderstood takes confidence. And I think what a lot of people are holding themselves back on is the fear of how they're going to be accepted with their peers. Mm. And uh, when I came over to EXP, you know, some of my buddies and they're good buddies, I golf with them. Good guys. Right. They're like, oh, you know, like you're the Remax brand and like you're losing that and like the referral networks and everything else. But I knew why I was making the move. It was like a values-based decision. I knew the model allowed me to build my own modern brokerage where I could be a lot more profitable and I can help my mem like the members of my team, my, my business partners get financial security and freedom was through this model. And so we made the move and every, everything that they said was the opposite. Our referrals went up, our business went up, our financial metrics all went up substantially. I was way more viable and I had way more funds that I could do things with to change the lives of people. So as opposed to making myself wealthier, I focused on making the people that work with me, my business partners wealthier. 
So every single person that works within our companies, I was able to invest in more lead generation. I was invest, able to invest in more leverage, in more marketing. I was able to create pension plans, which my goal is by 2025 that every single person that works within our Sims organizations has a pension plan that they get paid monthly. They don't have to wait 30 years to get paid out on it, right? Right now, I think I have it at 80, 75% of the people that work in our businesses are getting a monthly pension plan right now as they're working with us. So have the courage, have thick skin, stop worrying about what other people think. Because believe me, they'll come around. They'll come around because it just makes logical sense, right? Keep in mind too, EXP has a large, larger market cap than most brokerages put together now, right? Like just, just right now, last quarter, EXP had a billion dollar quarter. EXP has no debt. They're sitting on $110 million of cash, they're now paying a dividend back to their shareholders. And guess who the shareholders are? 80% of the shareholders of EXP are us, the agents. So we don't have these big comp these big pension funds coming in and dictating the direction of the company, right? This is a brokerage for the agent built for the, right? Like the whole model, if you get to learn EXP, you'll understand that it's the most agent centric model out there. And they share 50% of top line revenue back with us, the agent. It's it's a publicly traded company on the NASDAQ. So like that's legit. You can't become a publicly traded on the NASDAQ without a lot of scrutiny. It's very, very difficult to be that. And it's actually built into the chart of the company. So they've built their entire model where 50 cents on the dollar goes back to the agents to fund our revenue share model and our stock program. And they've been able to build a profitable real estate company that delivers world-class service to its agents and allows the agents to partner with them. They've created thousands of millionaires, thousands of millionaires just through EXP. And guess what? Those are agents. They've created pension plans for people. And guys in, in revenue share in, in EXP, and it's like upwards of $40,000 a month now. And I'm number 256. That's me. That means there's 255 agents in EXP that make more passive revenue every single month than we, than I do. And uh, I just hope that they have similar values where they're going to share it back with the people that help them get to the top. You know what I mean? So anyways, I could go on and on. You could tell I'm passionate about this. <laughs> well, I think it's also important to note that, you know, it took 12 years for EXP to get to 60,000 agents and they're currently on pace to do another 60,000 in 12 months. Right. So they're adding a thousand agents a week right now. So the model, like the, the, the fear that you're probably festering with in, inside your mind is again, misunderstood. And I think that's maybe part of the theme that we're talking about here. Um, not to mention value, right? Yeah, for sure. I think that's a great place to wrap it up. Everyone that's joined today, thank you so much. Jason, Eric, this has been incredible. If you're watching this and if what you're hearing is resonating with you, we'd love to connect and talk more. Check out collaborativemovement.com. The link is just right below. But on top of that, we'd love to meet with you personally over Zoom, coffee, whatever it is. We all love sharing in our successes. I think that's pretty obvious here. We want to help people lift up. We want to share what we've learned to uh, create our successes with you. So everybody, thanks again. Thanks for watching. Let's see what we can do to help your business grow.